few feelings as good in video games as knocking that final tick of health off a particularly tough boss, especially when that boss took you a few tries, or a few hours, or days. There are brutally hard bosses, and then there are bosses that just take forever to finally fell, no matter how much you've leveled your hero or party to get to this point. This is a massive fight after all, sometimes the final fight, so it certainly shouldn't be easy. But should it take so long you have to ensure that you won't need to take a toilet break over the course of three hours? You let me know after I run you through this traumatic trip down memory lane. I'm Jess from More Culture, and here are the 10 longest boss battles in gaming history. Number 10. Nick Avatar, Persona 3. Heading us off, the Persona series delivered a boss that not only forces you to fight through 14 phases, its final phase can even reflect damage. Also, it's really creepy. Persona players won't be strangers to a bit of necessary grinding, but this brutally tough battle has plenty of tricks up its sleeve that'll have you begging for its hour plus duration to come to a quicker close. Persona 3's final boss, Nick's avatar, has a final form special attack that is also capable of charming one of your party members into healing it to full health. So that's gonna stretch things out even further, if it doesn't kill you first. Its method of attack also changes with every new phase. Some players report having a max level party that totally cleaned up this battle. Others report having a 90 minute plus boss fight that they lost still due to enemy heals and ended up rage quitting. Let me know which one you were in that comment box. Number nine, the end, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. If you know anything about the end, the legendary veteran sniper that you have to face up against in Metal Gear Solid 3, I'm betting you had a solid guess he was gonna appear on this list. Perhaps the only blessing with this one is that the fight was actually supposed to be longer, but Kojima was convinced that two hours was probably long enough. This is a massive test of your patience. You'll need to actually find the guy before you can take a shot at him and ensure he isn't able to spot you while you're skulking around. Your thermal goggles would have been putting in serious work here if you're smart. To add to the difficulty, if you sit in your scope for too long, the end will pop up behind you and attack you. This fight requires finesse and brains. It may not be as long as the others on this list, but it requires you to be constantly on to avoid your foe getting the better of you. Some players have claimed to master his hiding spots and get this one done in 20 minutes, while others report taking weeks to strategize their approach. Actually, it's not such a bad idea to take weeks to strategize your approach, as if you set the game down during the middle of the fight and come back weeks later, the end actually will have died of old age. Although that being said, if you're waiting for a boss to die of old age, then that's definitely the longest boss fight on this list. Number eight, Abyssian, Tales of Symphonia. I have a special place in my heart for players who retrieved all of the items necessary to activate this optional boss fight, turned them in, then realized the boss fight immediately happens straight after you doing that, and you'll be stuck in it for at least an hour. Namco's RPG Tales of Symphonia was first released in 2003 on the Nintendo GameCube, and boy were the unsuspecting among you in for a bad time with this one. Abyssian rears his head adorned with brilliant red locks once you hand over all the devil's arms to him, and immediately realize that wasn't such a great idea. That's because said arms are apparently able to turn their wearers mad, which is not what you want, but Abyssian reckons if you just don't listen to the voices, then she'll be right. Well, as it turns out, she was not right, and Abyssian uses the power of the arms to call the power of the Dark Lord Nebulum into his body. I don't know if that made sense to you or not, but I think you can agree, even if it didn't, it's not a chill thing to happen. Abyssian is an absolute beast to fight in this state, and he scales to your level, so being tougher than him isn't possible. He has mastery of close and long range combat and abilities as well as spells, including a whole bunch of yours. There are only a handful of skills he can't access, and on PS2, he's even immune to the all divide item you would have wanted to use, and defaults to even more brutal high damage skills. Clearly somebody thought that was too easy because in the PS3 port, they also make him immune to all unison attacks after you cut down half his HP. I'm pretty sure all of that speaks for itself, but in case you need me to say it again, you're gonna be at this one for a while. Number seven, the final boss rush, Akami. Akami isn't necessarily a walk in the park to begin with, but nothing compares to its final boss rush. 
So what's harder than fighting every other boss in the game? Well, fighting slightly more powerful versions of every single one of them, of course. Akami's final boss, Yami, kicks off your encounter by making you face off against all of the major demons you've already toppled. Then you'll need to fight Yami, who has a solid handful of phases on top of that. Yami also starts the fight by stealing the power of the Celestial Brush from you, which removes your ability to wield divine instruments. Essentially, that all combines into a nightmare cocktail of a boss encounter that's gonna take you over an hour. This may not be the hardest boss fight on here, but it's up there with the longest. Number six, Colonel Raddick, Killzone 2. Boldly repping the very few number of entries on this list that are not from JRPGs, we've got Colonel Raddick from Killzone 2. 2009's Killzone 2 is a first-person shooter, a genre not typically known for its lengthy boss fights, so Raddick already stands out on that front. Destiny raid battles certainly take some figuring out, but once you got it down, you've got it down. Unlike some of the cruisier turn-based games on this list that might take a while but let you slip away to top up your beverage of choice, Killzone 2 is a straight-up bullet hell marathon. If you've set yourself up to play this one on the toughest difficulty setting, good luck to you. It's a relatively modest innings as far as the rest of these entries go at only 30 minutes, but that's 30 minutes of absolutely sweating it out and praying you don't slip up so you have to do the whole thing again. At the very least, it'll feel like you've created a core memory with this beast of a fight, especially after you've had to do away with the initial swarms of soldiers, the tougher wave after that, the tougher wave after that, and the final bank of waves that consists of elite Helga soldiers equipped with rocket launchers. Finally, you'll have to deal with Radic himself, who can both teleport and make himself invisible. Both things that are high on my list of desired superpowers, but not high on my list of things I want enemies in games to be able to do. Number 5. Pandemonium Warden – Final Fantasy XI I genuinely made an effort on this list to try and get away from JRPGs, but it is really tricky. Actually, it was really hard to just get away from the Final Fantasy franchise. But where the long boss fights are, we must follow, so here is the first in a lump of really long Final Fantasy boss fights. Final Fantasy XI has not one but two appearances on this list, because there's nothing that stokes the flames of long boss fights like the unholy trio of a JRPG, an MMO, and Final Fantasy. This nasty looking guy is one of two high notorious monsters in the game, and he was nigh on unbeatable due to his 10 different forms and tendency to summon even more dudes with 25 thousand HP a piece that you also need to deal with. One group even tried to take him on for 18 hours straight and couldn't defeat him. And stories began circulating that players were actually vomiting and passing out trying to finish him off. Pandy Warden gave players such a hard time that Square Enix needed to nerf him and put a time limit on the battle so players weren't physically endangering their health. I don't know what's worse, getting sick from fighting a video game boss for almost an entire day or making real progress only to get done in by a time limit. That's rough either way. Number 4. Yaismet – Final Fantasy XII Let's keep this brutal Final Fantasy boss's train rolling with Final Fantasy XII's wildly tough boss Yaismet and his over 50 million HP. Yep, you heard that right. At least Yaismet is optional as the ultimate elite mark within the PS2 RPG epic, but if you're a completionist or a masochist, you may have come up against him anyway. He isn't just a beast for his intimidating health bar though, he's also a severe danger to your party due to his ability to take you out in one shot and his petrifying moves. As charming as it may first sound that he's basically a giant dragon unicorn, the first time you see all the tiny extra health bars under his main health bar ready to top him up as soon as you claw your way through the last one, will quickly wipe the smile off your face. Especially as once you get him down to half a health bar, your party's damage is capped at just under 7,000. So you're in for a doozy of a second half. You also really need to stop him from healing, otherwise you're pretty much starting all over again. If you want maximum pain here, original Yaismet is where it's at, not his 2017 remaster counterpart. According to the game's official fandom wiki, this one's going to take at least an hour, but fans have said it's probably a lot more than that. Some report 3, some 13. Number 3. Egrilith Zero – Xenoblade Chronicles X Taking a quick detour to another JRPG, Xenoblade Chronicles X has a boss that also has millions of health bars. Millions. 
Eagle at Zero takes an especially long time, as finishing him off requires players to cooperate across their own single player games, with each defeat taking out one of his millions of health bars. Your personal part of the fight isn't going to take forever, but the whole process of ending this dude is a real marathon effort. Basically, it takes everyone playing the game to keep knocking off bars over the course of hours or even days. Not to mention that getting the guy to spawn in the first place is a months long endeavor, particularly given the game's dwindling player base. Number 2. Adamantoys Final Fantasy XV Five million hit points may not seem like a ton after the last few entries, but keep in mind that Square Enix wanted you fighting this guy for 15 hours. I guess somewhere between Final Fantasy XI and XV, they just stopped caring about players vomiting out of exhaustion. Adamantoys is a super boss who looks like a gigantic stony tortoise, but does not fight like one. You are so hilariously tiny next to this guy, it looks like he could squash you by looking at you sideways. Even at max level with the best weapons, this fight is a challenge, but Adamantoys has a bunch of fantastic loot to drop, assuming you manage to actually make him drop it. This isn't the toughest fight, but it is incredibly tedious, or at least it was before the game was updated. It's worth noting that, post-update, there is a slim chance you can beat him in one shot with the Ring of Lucy, but it's a dice roll as to whether you'll succeed. Before the game came out, Square Enix had actually said that this guy was going to take as much as 70 two hours to beat. While the fight obviously did not end up taking anywhere near as long as Square intended it to, it'll probably still be a good two hours of hacking away for you, sans ring exploit. Number 1. Absolute Virtue – Final Fantasy XI While deceptively reassuring in name, there is absolutely nothing reassuring about this 30-hour boss fight. Yes, this one is for those of you who were skeptical after I included that 30 minute fight from Killzone. Absolute Virtue is another high notorious monster in Final Fantasy XI. Originally players were taking 30 hours to defeat this thing, and if they figured out a way to do it faster, the developers were patching them out as they went so the challenge would remain. As you can imagine, this spawned a ton of media coverage about artificial difficulty, and as a result the boss was patched to become more manageable, allowing for a higher level limit for players and a 2 hour battle limit. Still a mighty challenge for players trying to chip into this glowy pain in the arse's 100,000 HP bar. He also has a massively powerful healing spell called Benediction, as if the heavy attacks, vitality and spells weren't already doing you in. The developers had said that after three years, no players had actually managed to defeat him in a way that they saw as legitimate, and even today, it's still a serious challenge an absolute challenge. And that's our list. Do let me know down in the comments which bosses took you the longest to beat. As always, I've been Jess from War Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter where I'm at JessMcDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great content.